the song Penny Lane by the Beatles. Do we all know it? Yeah, okay. What do you think of when you hear that song? For me, I hear my childhood. I hear my mom playing it in the car and telling me the backstory. I hear my parents telling me they got engaged on Penny Lane. I hear them splitting up a couple of years later. But it's still my dad's ringtone for my mum to this day. That song, it means so, so much to me. And the fact that someone else can hear it and not get the same feeling of nostalgia that I get intrigues me. My interest in this topic started around early December of last year, when in music class, we watched a documentary which followed neurodegenerative disease patients and their journey through musical education and therapy. There was amazing conclusions from their studies, such as the fact that socially shared musical activities help develop personality skills and cooperative effort, and that musical education helps develop the, co the cognitive, affective, and, psycho and psychomotor aspects of human development. Now, while these drawbacks were amazing, it's not what stunned me. What stunned me was the personal stories of these people. People who haven't been able to communicate with their family members in years come alive at the sound of their favorite song. My music teacher then asked us to do a project to make a soundtrack for our life. This is when I stumbled across Penny Lane, of course, and I was met with the great wave of nostalgia. I shared my story with my Nana about how finding this song made me feel such intense feelings. And she shared a story with me, a story of how she was in the kitchen, just there, just ironing, and Keep a Country was on. And a song that she hadn't heard since 1971 played. She said she was met with just a wave of this pleasant feeling of just calm and connectivity with her younger self of being 18, just married and moved into a new house. A connection with her younger self. She couldn't even remember the name of the song. Just the feeling it gave her. Unfortunately, later on that December, my other Nana passed away. As all funerals are, it was a really, really difficult day. Inputs of stories from the priest, from her children, from her grandchildren, made this image of the life of my Nana Rita become clearer to everyone there. But it was at the crematorium when her chosen song played, we really heard her humor and her personality. It was Top of the World by the Carpenters. The music, it just gave us a piece of her that the stories, while beautiful, just couldn't. It gave us this extra bit that she was in the room with us, communicating with us. My Nana was really fond of an old back garden sing song. We'd all be sitting around the table and my mom and my Nana and maybe my auntie, they'd all sing old songs from the 60s and 70s while the grandkids would sing what's on the radio. And my Nana wouldn't have a clue. Whether we could also sing Irish folk songs. Now, God forbid we'd know the words to any of these songs, but it was just the connectiveness, the, f the feeling we got. Whenever my auntie is in times of anxiety, she sings a song that she hasn't heard since my mom sang it at her junior infant's Christmas recital. But any time she gets slightly anxious or troubled, she sings it and it grounds her. My mum and I, in the car, whenever we're going somewhere like the airport or the hospital, we sing old Christian primary school hymns, not for any religious reason, but because of the feeling of the connect and the grounding and the familiarity of these songs that bring us together. Folk songs have emerged over centuries as a form of entertainment that could also be used for education and it could provide wellsprings of resilience and rebellion and sedition for the working class. Ballads and broadsides have helped historians paint an image of some of society's most marginalized because music is a media that can be spread without censorship and passed down through oral, aural traditions through generations. I'm only 16. And through listening to music from my childhood, I've learned a lot about myself and about the people around me. So when I switch on the radio or when I turn on Spotify, I know that I'm building the soundtrack to what will be the soundtrack of my teen years. So think back. 
Think back to a song that you had on repeat for months or a song that your parents played in the car for years. Because making a soundtrack for your life, it can teach you things about yourself, things that maybe you didn't know or didn't remember. Thank you. <laughs>